today on the TMZ Podcast. Hello and welcome to the TMZ Podcast. I'm Charlie Cotton and joining me on the podcast today, newsbreaker lovemaker, Devin Rahl. How are you, Devin? Here on a Monday. Here on a Monday. This is rare, but we got a lot of good stuff. I know. Well, you are my Coachella inside info guy. So I had you but, on Friday to but tease I'm not, it. I'm not there. I didn't go. But you're, you're just like saying for pa- from past experience, from past experience, and you're like, you're, in, I'm, like, I'm like a cool guy. Like who else were you gonna ask? Yeah, I know. It was either you or like Derek, our lawyer. Oh god. <laughs> well, let's go with that. You. Was a tough choice. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we'll do a big Coachella wrap up because cool. there seems to be so many stories coming out of Coachella more than usual. I would have thought a lot of visuals, a lot of visuals, a lot of videos. Yeah, it was great. We're going to have to talk about this Trump trial, which starts today. Trump is in court as we speak right now, uh, selecting jury. So no former president or current president, no president has ever gone like up on charges and gone to court. It's historic. It's historic. And then finally, we're going to talk about Drake and Rick Ross have been beefing all weekend back and forth. It's pretty funny. I've been all about it. I love it. I did a deep dive last night. You did? On just like everything that happened over the It's hilarious. And we got no almost news today. Because it's just news. We just got news today. We just got bangers. We don't have time for almost news today. Sorry, guys. Check back tomorrow. And the the rest of the week. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. All right. Coachella was over the weekend. It was. It was. It looked pretty fun. Pretty. Uh, Did you have FOMO? None. I surprisingly, and I, and I'm usually, so I haven't been in a few years and I'm usually the, uh, the, sh- the YouTube stream guy. Yeah. I'm like, Ooh, I'm going to sit on my couch and kind of pretend like I'm there. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I, there wasn't even really that many acts over the weekend that I really wanted to tune in for. Yeah. I kept checking on my phone. Like, you know, what time does this person go on? What time would I turn YouTube on to stream it live? Yeah. And anytime I sort of said, okay, I'll turn it on. I was like, I'm kind of glad I'm not there. Yeah, I like I don't want to deal with, you know, getting out of there late night, the traffic. Oh, you sound old, man. You know, walking around on this creaky knee all day. <laughs> like th- those are the things that like I I don't miss. It's just influencer central. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, it was. There was a lot there was um I I wasn't uh, we talked about it on Friday. I wasn't like super into the lineup, but I did feel like uh, there was a lot of star power there. Though. There was. Well, I mean, we got to talk about Travis and Taylor, their kissing tour. Of Coachella, they were in the crowd kissing. They were backstage kissing. They were at Neon Carnival, not even on site. A different party. Yeah, that's at like Coachella. The, the biggest after party at Coachella every year. Kissing and cuddling there too. Yeah, I mean they're in love, man. What it, has it been a year yet? No, still under a year. That's uh, then people that are hating on this, like that's normal, man. You're at Coachella with like your new, yeah, your new boo, all wrapped up. I I don't know. It it looked. I, I'm personally not a guy that's like, oh, I want to go to Coachella with a significant other. But oh, how come? Eat your own. How come? Why wouldn't you go? <laughs> I, I just, you know, I want to hang with the boys. <laughs> I want to listen to music. I don't want to be dragged to sets that I don't want to go to. Oh, right, yeah, that's, right. that's why. That's why. <laughs> oh, hilarious. But they did look like they were having a good time. They did. They did. Um, you know, the only moment I kind of had a bit of FOMO, there was only one moment I was like, I wish I was there. I can't wait to hear this. Will Smith doing oh, Men in Black. Really? When I saw or the Jay video, Balvin. Oh, I, I wouldn't want to be a Jay Balvin. Yeah. But I'd like to be at Will Smith doing Men in Black. To, yeah, it would be pretty cool. Um, Do you think there were a lot of people there that were like, oh my God, what in the hell is going on? Totally, because you wouldn't expect Will Smith to come out at Jay Balvin. Apparently, I was talking to someone in the office uh, who actually had known about this, but we weren't allowed to disclose. Oh. And um, he said, I guess Will Smith is a big J Balvin fan. Never knew. Yeah, so apparently he was like all about it, and then J Balvin found this out and was like, oh, I'd love to bring you out. And I think he had like an alien, alien theme. themed thing, yeah. so it kind of like was on brand. But yeah, that that was a cool moment, I oh, guess. Oh, it was awesome. The good guys dress in black, remember that. Just oh, wow, you're a face to face and make contact. I don't like when you rap. <laughs> I really don't. Is like it called it. rapping when I do it or no, just like? No, no, it's like spoken word. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, look, Kesha had a big moment at I've Coachella. I've been waiting. So this is another interesting thing because when all the Diddy stuff happened, everyone was wondering is she still going to sing the lyric? To TikTok. Yes. And because obviously it's usually TikTok usually starts wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. But she came out. 
at um, who did she come out at? It was with uh, Renee Rapp. That's and right. I think she's an actor. What's up with all these actresses that also are just like playing Coachella? Because if you got a fan base, then just because I guess she's a singer, but I, is she not an actress? Yeah, I, I think if you got a fan I, base, I, you bring him in everywhere. Like I and- guess, but anyways, I, yeah, she was performing uh, on Sunday. And so she came out, Kesha, and she said, wake up in the morning like fuck P. Diddy. And then she put the two middle fingers up. Wow, hard. What a shot. Wow. What a shot. Um, Interesting. The biggest, It was like, weird, though. I watched that clip. Again, I wasn't there, but she changed it, and I, I felt like it didn't get much of a reaction from the crowd. I mean, it was too quick to, like, well, it's it a was, fast-paced it was, it was song. It was also Sunday at 2 p.m., dude. Yeah. Everyone's hungover. And Everyone is, they're... like, come down creek. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, it's like I'm just going to make it in on Sunday by maybe 6 p.m. and drink a water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, the biggest fail of the weekend goes to Grimes. Oh, th- this oh, this was my favorite clip of the week. Oh, really? Her story of the weekend. Because she couldn't get it right on stage. Like, the technical difficulties, <laughs> she was swearing. The screaming, dude. She was screaming. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> she just, but whenever she, she's like, like a DJ. And so whenever she, pl- like, pressed play on something, it would go at double time instead of normal time. And she couldn't figure out how to make it go back to normal time. It was a disaster. But uh, it was disaster. awesome. But it's funny because, so Grimes, I'm not super familiar with her music, but I'm assuming this was like a, D, a DJ set. So this wasn't like her normal, like what she would do if she performed. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. She, she isn't a DJ. Oh. I believe she's like an artist of some type. I think she does pop music. Mm. Um, but she did a DJ it's, set. It's interesting though, this story to me, because... Everyone always makes fun of DJs. Oh, they get paid all this money. They go up there. They just hit play. Right. It's not that easy. <laughs> clearly not. It clearly isn't because she was trying to DJ. She was talking about how she couldn't do math in her head. I was like, what the hell does this have to do with math? I, I, I know. But I yeah, know. everything was double time. She was screaming every 10 seconds. She was stopping the show and basically like apologizing. I heard, I heard people write about it as the worst Coachella performance in history. Really? Yes. And I heard Frank Ocean somewhere like, ooh, thank God. <laughs> yes. Thank so God. True. Thank you, Grimes. So true. Um But but yeah, it it's it was it was a sight to to see, that's for sure. Uh Suki Waterhouse performed and the other actress turned musician and yeah. she took the opportunity to announce that her and Rob Patterson had a baby girl. Congratulations. Uh, congratulations to you. Billie Eilish had a surprise performance. Like she yeah, came at out the, as... at the Do Lab. Were you a Do Lab guy at Coachella? Or because no? that's very small, isn't it? They made it much bigger, but oh. it's that little small kind of in the middle open tent that is. It's, it's not really a tent, but like yeah, exactly. It was like you go right by the entrance, and you know during the day they'd spray water on people and stuff. Yes, it's so hot. So that's like the the happening place to be now because they'll bring out a lot of surprise guests at night. Oh, fun. So it was Billie Eilish, I guess. And I looked into this. I was like, wait, did she perform at the Do Lab? No, she was up there with a bunch of people and they played like hits from the early 2000s. Oh, she didn't sing? No. Oh, well then this she didn't play any story. of her. I heard Mr. Brightside playing and I'm like, wait, what's going on here? Oh, she bizarre. Was, she was up there and there was a DJ and they were just playing like hits. Well, that's kind of, that's what but, the do lab but, for is like sing along, like, yeah, it, but, it, but she didn't perform. She just like took the stage. And she, so was people, part, she was jumping around on stage. Okay. Gotcha. Um, Nelly Furtado, she performed and she, she fell on stage I saw that. and apparently there was blood everywhere. She posted pictures of her injury. I think she got injured hand or something like that. It wasn't the, the when I saw the video it was a little bit of a letdown. Oh, really? The ball wasn't that big a video. And she bounced right up. Very professional. Very professional. She was, do, I think, wait, is Dom Dalla, is he Australian? Yes. Because that was the set that she was. Perf- they have a song together. Oh, interesting. So that, that's the, when she fell. Shout out Dom Dollar. I'm a big Dom Dollar. You are? Yeah, I love him. Oh, I saw him at LAX recently and just said hello. I find it. Um, you just said hello. I find it confronting to interview Australians. I don't like interviewing Australians. Are you serious? I feel like Americans. So if Chris Hemsworth walked through, you'd be like, uh, you'd freak out? Yeah. I don't like interviewing Australians because they know, I feel like they get me in a way that Americans don't. Like they, they can see me as a, the fraud I am, whereas Americans are like, nice accent, dude. Okay. Wow. Wow. You learn something new every day. I'm yep. Like, facts. Wow. Um, well, shout out Dom Dalla. <laughs> Dom Dalla. Um, Justin Bieber and Jaden Smith had a nice moment. Nice moment. That, they had a kiss on the cheek calling? each other. That that video was bizarre. Yeah, they. I think they were both like drunk or it, something. The whole video was just bizarre. They he was each like, other. no, it was like he was like grinding on him, kind of. Yes. Jaden was, and then they like kind of like kissed or he kissed him on the cheek, and then it was just a weird interaction. Um, I don't finally, know. that's all I have to really say. About to it. close this out, three people who shouldn't have been at Coachella: Jeff Bezos, 
He's 60 years old, yeah, man. Get yourself there. home. He was there last year. Heidi Klum, 50 years old. Same. Dressing like a Coachella, sort of, wow. I'm a 22-year-old. Wow. I was fine with Heidi being there. Are you going to say Melanie for third? N- Melanie, our, our co-worker. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Lala Kent from Vanderpump Rules went She's pregnant. She's pregnant. She okay. was there I pregnant. Don't, I don't like that. I didn't I'm not trying either. to shame pregnancy, but I would, yeah. That's... She was there at night. Dude, pregnant. it's hot. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Let's get on to our next story. The Trump trial has begun in his hush money case to, to Stormy Daniels, allegedly. Um, so he, he, people are alleging that he spent $130,000 to try to silence Stormy Daniels just before the 2016 election. Yep. And um, then when he was president, Michael Cohen, his lawyer, who has already been, you know, sentenced, he, 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 he was guilty. He turned on Trump. He t- turned on Trump. Michael Cohen has served time for this. Yeah. Um, he's like the star witness uh, in this case. And uh, right now, jury selection is taking place. So it's so interesting trying to get an impartial jury for a Donald Trump case. Like, because, because he's such a lightning rod. Like, you have, like, no one is impartial about Trump. Either yeah. you love Trump or you can't stand the guy. It, it, exactly. There's no one who's just like, oh, he's whatever. So apparently these jurors, potential jurors, is over 100, you know, and yeah. they're getting 42 questions that they have to answer. And then they'll whittle that down. And then um, lawyers on both sides. They have to agree. They have to agree. You're just teaching me the jury system right now. I know. But how do you, how do you agree upon? Uh, it's it's going to take a lot of long, long time, I would imagine. And, but I don't know. My thing with, with like all these Trump trials, I know like you seem to be super into this, but like. Bro, nothing ever is going to happen to this guy. It doesn't it just seem all like white noise at this point. Like he's always like in trouble for something going, you know, owing someone money, supposed to go to jail. It's like and whatever happens to him. Nothing. I mean, I I agree and I would have thought this would be the biggest like day of news in the history of the country, but I I don't see it that everywhere. It's not even bigger than Coachella? Yeah, exactly. Because because I think of what like what you said, which is like there's so many things he's he's gonna get off all of them. But I actually think this is the smallest case he's gonna you know stand trial for. The other ones that he's like um, charged with or whatever that he's it's, going to trial for seem bigger, but potentially harder to convict. This because is, this one, it seems like they have like a paper trail. Like yeah. there was the direct deposit of one hundred and thirty thousand dollars to her several from, times, several from times. Trump's attorney. Yes, and he's turned on Trump, and you're saying he's going to be a witness. So this would seem like a pretty easy case to, yeah, like prosecute him. Right? And if convicted, he faces up to four years in jail. Like you know, he won't. But that's what I'm saying. It's but like, if he gets convicted, how this must have a bearing on the election. Because no, because don't you think that if he gets convicted, a that's just going to fire his base up even more. His They're, base, yes, but people like in the middle, are you going to? But again, is there really that many people in the middle? Well, you already hate him, or you like him? Well, they're campaigning for a reason. Biden and Trump yeah, are that's, campaigning for that's true for these middle people. Yeah, that's true. I just think that like just the way the justice system works, like okay, say he gets convicted or whatever, then he appeals, right? And then it goes on another however long. Then it's like oh, it's like a. There wasn't a conclusion in the, the jury. I, I like, feel I you, man. I just feel like this is going to go on forever, and it's just become white noise. Yes. Yes, it does. I mean, he, but, he's going to have to be in court every single day for the next potentially six to eight weeks. Because it's criminal, Trump has to attend oh, he has the case. To appear. So he can't, like, campaign. And I, I, it's bad news for him, you know? It doesn't look oh, good definitely. when a potential new next president is, like, in court, maybe going to jail. We could, we could legitimately have like a prison president like he could be con- convicted is, is, and then you could still vote for someone behind bars can you yes oh really that's you ha- crazy it, like it doesn't it sounds like the most ridiculous like idea for a tv comedy i mean and this, it could really happen at this point it's like anything seems po- anything seems possible agreed agreed okay let's get on with the celebrity news well trump is a celebrity yeah I guess. I, we've covered only celebs true true okay there was some great weekend beef this weekend. Great weekend yep. beef. So this all started with a Rick Ross song, which was actually, it was actually replying to a Drake song originally. But all this weekend, Rick Ross and Drake were going back and forth on whether or not Drake got a nose job yeah. and whether or not Rick Ross takes <laughs> weight loss drugs. <laughs> I, I mean, what a beef. <laughs> what a beef. So yeah, 
it's st- it started with Rick Ross song Champagne Moments. In that song, it, it, he says, you ain't never want to be an N-word anyway, N-word. That's why you had an operation to make your nose smaller than your father knows, N-word. Okay. That was in so, response to a, a song by Drake no, yeah, called Push Ups. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it all started a couple weeks ago with the Metro Boomin stuff. We're right. all dissing Drake. Drake didn't say anything. Then he dropped. But everyone thought it was, see, this was why I did a deep dive. So then a song came out from DJ Academics that he allegedly got from Drake that was dissing like Kendrick, Rick Ross, Metro Boomin, like all of them. And every, but everyone then was like, wait, is this AI? Did it sound like AI to you? It sounded like a Drake song. It's, it's impossible to tell what sounds like AI or not. And because if the AI is good enough, it sounds like Drake. True. And it's weird because it wasn't dropped on like Apple Music, Spotify, whatever. It was just like dropped on Twitter, which made people even more be like, yeah, this is AI. Right. But then and then that caused it that like you were saying to uh, Rick Ross to do a a diss track that he also dropped like on the internet. Right. Not officially. And then they were going back and forth with like, oh, you got a nose job. Oh, he takes Ozempic. And it's just like, what are we doing here, man? Right. Well, um, to respond to the nose job accusation, Drake put up a screenshot where he texted his mum. Did yeah, you see this? He texted I his mum. So again, I couldn't tell if that was real. No, well, that well, was Drake, his mom texting well, well, him. Yeah, Drake put it up, right? So it's Drake's mom texting him saying, Aubrey, the internet is saying you got a nose job. Job, you looked the same to me in the kitchen today. And then Drake replies with laughing emojis and it said, I would have got a two for one deal if I went, mom. It's coming from this Rick Ross guy. I did songs with, but he's gone lo- loopy off the <laughs> Mount Jaro. And Mount Jaro is the weight loss drug. <laughs> he's gone loopy off the Mount Jaro. And he hasn't eaten in days and it's turned him angry and racist. He's performing at proms for money. It's bad. Don't <laughs> worry. We'll handle it. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. The I personally actually really like the Drake song. I actually think it's hard. Dude, AI songs are going to be better than artists can make. saying that. I don't think it's AI. I think that's Drake. Well, Drake has never even claimed that it was his. But I thought... He's also never claimed that it was AI. Yeah, exactly. And so and what's going to be really interesting to me as this goes on and on is like, yeah, their petty little beef on like Instagram stories is funny, but I'm waiting to see what Kendrick says back. True. Cause Kendrick goes really hard. He's known as like one of the, obviously one of the best rappers as, as far as, you know, lyrically. And I mean, in my opinion, that Drake song went way harder at Kendrick than anyone. True. Let's actually, let's listen to some of their Instagram back and forth because this is what Rick Ross posted about Drake. Oh, it's such a beautiful day. Me waking up from a nap, I just realized BBL Drizzy called his mommy on me. Uh, He shared their text messages between each other. Uh, Cupcake Drake, tell your mama you stayed out past your curfew, white boy. So he keeps calling him white boy throughout the whole thing. Obviously kind of racist because Drake is mixed race. Yeah. And also he keeps calling him big nose. So Drake is Jewish. And he keeps calling him Big Nose and calling his fans the pastrami posse. I don't feel comfortable having this conversation with Right. Him. I think we need to get out of here. I think so too. <laughs> Man. It is, it is interesting though. And I'm here for it. Yeah. On Twitter. It was the best beef of the weekend, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay. Thanks for joining me today, Devin. Of course. And we'll see you guys here tomorrow. Yep. Goodbye.